low and middle income countries, linking this research into action has remained a big challenge. And that is why we only publish our data, share it internationally, but we don't see the effect of the research we are doing. Knowledge translation is actually important for making evidence-informed decisions about the kind of health programs and services to provide, as well as decisions about improving health systems within which uh, the programs and services are provided. Researchers led by LAVIS did identify four models of linking research into action and practice. Next slide. These models are based on how producers of research and research users are positioned based on their efforts in the research cycle. The producers of research, most of us, it's not the laboratory based research only, but also even in the community. I like the way we had said that our community pharmacies, you have a lot of research within the prescription you are dispensing. And you need to translate that for evidence. So these are four models. The first one, normally the research producer uh, thinks about what research they want to do. And from that uh, thought, or probably they are looking at the institutional targets to come up with, uh, you know, uh, research evidence that actually uh, is according to their institutional uh, strategy. Once they get this research, they then uh, translate it to the policy makers so that uh, they try to push uh, their research onto the policy makers to implement. Sometimes this gets a challenge because probably the policy maker did not want that particular uh, work you are pushing them to. The other model of knowledge translation is where now the policy maker wants to solve another problem of a particular degree. Uh, let's say like now the COVID we are having. They would like uh, to get that information. So they will, you know, uh, uh, come to the researchers to give them evidence of how to handle these disease conditions. So that's the useful uh, effort model B. The third model is the exchange uh, effort, where both the policy makers and the researchers come together and make decisions on actually what they would like to be done by research so that it can be implemented. And the fourth uh, model where I am going to talk about uh, uh, in this presentation is the integrated effort. In this integrated effort, we have the researcher, we have the users, and then comes in the knowledge translation platform. All these together will make our work easy as knowledge translators, knowledge users, to be able to implement the work we need. Next slide, please. So the main objective in this presentation is uh, to describe knowledge translation web-based portal, which uh, we call it a city of Asia. We have been developing and we just uh, in, in connection with the county health uh, officers, and we'd like to share the experiences we have gone through so far, because uh, this uh, particular Asia portal is uh, developed to be able to facilitate the local rapid synthesis mechanisms to respond to county health policy actors requirements for research evidence requests. Next slide, please. So based on the Levis uh, Model D uh, integrated effort, we involved this platform, 
the county health uh, champion and the Kenry researchers with our colleagues as well. So first of all, we decided not to push uh, our work to the county uh, health executive, but we had to go into their uh, territory, into their space, and uh, survey on come out a survey on what their needs are. What are the gaps in the county so that we can help uh, close this gap using the infrastructure as their platform? So, as such, evidence capacity needs assessment was carried out. This was a detailed baseline survey on the demand and the use of research evidence to inform public health decisions. We undertook this, uh, this uh, assessment in uh, six counties. We had uh, chosen six pilot counties, namely uh, Isiolo, Kikiri, Makweni, Nahururu, and Saitotaveka. And we carried this assessment between uh, November and December 2018. Next slide, please. So as an intervention, we propose this innovative approach in an attempt to minimize the demand use gap. So first, we incorporated the services of the county health research champion to be part of the solution development process. We, we found that most of the countries actually have a research unit, but uh, they have challenges on what uh, their role should be. So these are what we are calling research champions. So we uh, incorporated them uh, in the development of, of the particular Asia platform. Secondly, we customize open source web technology to develop and deploy locally appropriate and easily accessible online. Uh, knowledge management and uh, knowledge translation platform. This we, uh, we did for use by county health research champions to support evidence informed decision making process. Next slide, please. Thank you. The platform system development process. Uh, we, the overall architecture of the knowledge translation platform was built based on an open source web technology. And in designing the system, the data and database were the most important component. The data consisted of facilitations, proposals, and consultancy reports. This, uh, remember, this is just the beginning, uh, which would consist of very many other documents. But for a start, in the development, the data uh, we, uh, we uploaded publications, proposals, and technical records. The database was a collection of related data shared by several categories of users to fill main system reporting requirements. Uh, in other words, database was part of information system that supported activities such as assessing, collecting, retrieving, processing, and managing research publications uh, and proposal data elements. The county research champions were actually the ones responsible for search of publications from the internet sources such as PubMed, NARI, the libraries or uh, their organization's official uh, website. So we used uh, the research champions in the county to upload, to search for information, search for even the, the research uh, projects that have been going on in their uh, environment because these are the ones which can uh, solve their uh, problems. Because if it is a malaria county and somebody is doing malaria on uh, uh, that area, then the results from this uh, 
research would actually help uh, uh, inform their decision making. So, uh, once the champions uh, uh, got this information from the internet, they would later populate the Utakitiwa as the portal. Next slide, please. And uh, here we can see uh, the first page of uh, this uh, Utafikiwa Asia Research Repository. You, uh, the research champions would go in, uh, register, they log in, and uh, start uh, uploading the information. The main objective of this uh, repository uh, is really to collect research publications and processes into disease domains uh, from Kenya institutions involved in research and also uh, proposals. So once you open the Utafikiwa Apia repository, this is the first page that comes out and uh, we were able to train the research champions on how to upload their information on this platform. Next, please. So what were the findings? What were the experiences uh, we found during the assessment in the counties? The key gaps included lack of county specific research repositories and the inability of county health managers to use existing research publications to support informed decision making. So for the intervention we opted to develop this and deploy this platform, which we were developing so that uh, uh, we could be able to assist the research uh, centers in the county, be able to have their own repository and also carry out research translation of whatever research evidence they had to be able to make informed decisions. We did hold a two-day uh, workshop for the county research champions in November 2019. And thereafter, I uh, followed up with uh, participants using social media like WhatsApp. Next slide. It's always nice to follow up uh, when training so that you, under, you uh, check whether the uh, participants are actually understanding and implementing the training uh, context. So the aim was to get the county research champions input into the development of the Utafiti Wa Asia platform, right from designing, programming, pre-testing, and subsequent deployment stages. This was very important for ownership and sustainability. You know, it is always important to develop innovative uh, platforms, but if it is not used, then it becomes useless. It's like paint. You buy paint and you let it dry there and you don't paint your wall, then it will not be useful. So we would have this innovative uh, system to help us uh, reduce our work and uh, have, a, you know, translate our research but unless we own it, it will not be sustainable. So it was important to involve the uh, county health uh, unit uh, from the beginning of the development of this platform. And we found this very useful because they were really very enthusiastic. And by August 2020, the platform had actually 47 research publications mapped out by the counties, the six counties, 473 conference abstracts and uh, a consultancy reports or technical reports had been mapped. Next slide, please. Uh, in terms of the output from the platform, there were 25 types of evidence summary reports that were generated. Once you input uh, yeah, the, 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 the publications or abstracts or reports, this uh, platform is able now 
to synthesize that information and generate for you a summary. And this summary is well packaged, which can now be understood by the policy maker. So categorization of research evidence requests and downloaded by those who visited the Utahiti Asia site uh, had 67% uh, uh, infectious diseases. The categories of non-communicable diseases were 23% and 5% uh, publication from uh, public health, these were the most uh, mapped research in the counties. There are, of course, uh, inter-county variations in terms of reports requested and generated from the Isafitua Asia platform. Next slide, please. This is an example of an um, evidence brief generated from the city of Asia. Take note of the synthesized package research evidence. Just as pharmacists are busy, even the policy makers are also busy. You cannot give them a published uh, research paper to extract information. You need to give them a synthesized information and as um, we have had this will be uh, uh, able to, they will be able to understand and implement. So this is just an example where we have the outcome and the summary of findings. Here actually, because it was uh, just at the beginning to test, there were just uh, single studies cited. And uh, this is actually research evidence brief, not policy brief. Remember, policy brief, you have to take, uh, to read through several papers discussing the same uh, subject. But uh, if you want to have a research evidence debrief from just one uh, research, then it's possible also to summarize this and uh, find information that uh, you can pass on to the policy makers to implement. Next slide, please. As we had Dr. Ayana say, you, data needs to be visualized for everybody to understand what is going on. So on this particular Asia platform, we are able, able to visualize the data. If we had entered research publications, we can visualize uh, uh, the information as like if you look at the first uh, cycle, the largest are actually abstracts. There are so many abstracts uh, which were uploaded and synthesized to get information, followed by publications and then proposals. So if you want to look at the abstracts by disease domain, the publications by disease domain, you can uh, find out uh, this in the portal. Next slide, please. Next slide. Thank you very much. So in conclusion, I would like to say that rapid breathing mechanism, that is synthesis of research publications to guide evidence-informed decision making can be realized if individual health workers are guided and not imposed on by the researcher. This is the model D, the integrated effort. And in addition, a customized technology, like an online platform that meets the needs of the county's health department, teaches of low cost, and has potential to catalyze sustained demand of research evidence by government through organizing, touring, retrieving, synthesizing, and visualizing of research publications. In a nutshell, this is uh, knowledge translation and knowledge management. So this is my final slide, but let me just, before I, I acknowledge the supporters, let me just uh, have a parting shot for the pharmacy. All of us as pharmacists 
we should recognize our value in improving health outcomes for people with various health conditions and develop innovative programs through knowledge translation initiatives to implement best practices in patient care. And with the overwhelming amount of new information published daily, we should aim to build innovative products collaboratively and present it in a manner that we can uh, be able to use. Next slide, please. Let me, uh, next slide. Let me acknowledge the county directors of medical services of the six counties that were presented in the workshop and uh, the survey period. I would like to acknowledge the director, Kemri, for permission to undertake this research. The Deputy Director CPHR for her uh, guidance. We had our partner, AFIDEP, JCU Act, Ministry of Health, Division of Research and Innovation. We, I would like to acknowledge them for co-hosting uh, the workshop and also uh, some of them are taking part in this uh, survey. This project benefited from the research grant through the National Research Fund uh, Grant. Thank you very much for listening and over to you, Anil. Uh, thank you, Professor Ora. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Also, thank you for uh, all your contributions uh, to pharmacy practice. And also thank you on behalf of all those you have mentored. Thank you very much. Thank you. So the, uh, the next part is uh, my presentation. Um, and uh, I'm going to be assisted by the president of uh, PSK. Uh, however, this is also the interactive part. So get ready to start typing on your chat. As we go through, uh, as we go through the introduction, I will ask you if you are on, uh, if you are on this chat, uh, you put your name and your position uh, as we announce your position and as the president announce your announces your your name. Next slide, please. So uh, PSK, this is how we are organized. We have the National Governing Council. So uh, we went with the full name, but the acronym is NGC. So if you are on NGC, put your name and say NGC on that chat so people know you. I think there are quite a few. So President, maybe this one, we won't go through all of them. They can just acknowledge their names on the, um, on, on the chat group if they are here. Uh, then we go to the National Executive Committee. The, the names of those on the National Executive Committee are on page eight and nine, I think, of your, of your program. Uh, yes, it is page eight. Um, and uh, President, you want to introduce the uh, neck? Hi, Anis. Members, Hi. Uh, um, uh, all protocols observed. Uh, um, uh, it's indeed a, a nice, a nice, a nice day, and just in keeping with the energy, um, just uh, uh, I think mine is just a simple job, uh, Dr. Anis. I, I don't know if I can keep up with your energy, uh, but to list the members of the National Executive Committee, uh, you all know we we have a um, neck that uh, has the president, uh, Dr. Kabale, the deputy president, the uh, honourable. Uh, uh, Treasurer, Dr. Juliet Konje, uh, Dr. Paul Mwaniki. I don't know if it's been presented, uh, shown on the screen, because me, I can see on mine. Um, Dr. Paul Mwaniki, Dr. Sultan, uh, representing public sector. Uh, Dr. Paul Mwaniki, ex-official member. Um, Dr. Anis Ramtula, uh, uh, representing all comedians in the society. Uh, <laughs> but uh, just in the manufacturing. Uh, supply chain. Uh, Dr. Mike Mugoma, uh, Academia, uh, is the Dean of uh, School of Pharmacy in uh, MKU. Uh, Dr. Tim Panga, uh, he's the CEO of Nanyuki um, Hospital, uh, public sector again. Dr. Peter Ngoi, uh, a renowned uh, um, and champion of uh, patient centered care at the, uh, the private sector that's at the community pharmacy level. Dr. Daniela Munene, uh, our CEO, 
uh, communications and uh, project management expert. Uh, so that's our neck, um, and all these are our leaders serving us voluntarily, um, uh, given mandate from our members. And I think it's a, quite a high uh, quality caliber. And um, uh, of course, with, with, without your support, there's nothing much we can achieve, but uh, I would like to thank each and every one of you for your support, uh, particularly in uh, volunteering in all the subcommittees that make uh, our work uh, move back to you, Ali. Thank you. Then we have the Secretariat, uh, which is led by uh, Dr. Daniela Munene. I don't know how many of you know, but she was actually a Miss Pharmacy of uh, Let's Not Take the Year, uh, but she was a Miss Pharmacy at UN, so uh, that's our CEO. No, no, she was Miss we... World. Uh, Dr. Anil, Miss you World. Are, you are, you're confusing. Oh, Kenya, okay. Yeah. Miss, Miss World Kenya. Way to go. Then we have Bao Gitao. I think he was Mr. KU for many years. He, he might probably still be there. Uh, we have Rachel, who is the secretary. We have Rose, the accountant. And my best friend in PSK, doc, Dr. Eric. Uh, I say best friend because I haven't reached 20 points, so he's going to make sure I reach 20. Uh, we have uh, the symposium committee. Um, I think they've done a sterling job. Uh, kudos to them. Dr. Eva, the conference convener, uh, Dr. Mike Mongoma. Um, Mike has been with us for a long time and congratulations on all the continuing education things you do. Uh, Dr. Grace Ganga, uh, Dr. Robert Miano. Um, my, I think he's my, uh, my only member on that committee that uh, uh, president put me on for comedians. Uh, we're together. Uh, Dr. Catherine Wambura and Dr. Christabel Kayamba. So that's our, our secretariat. Uh, then we, uh, the secretariat has three departments, programs, communications, finance, and admin. And then we have the standing committee, uh, legal and ethics. Uh, President, the chair for legal and ethics. That's wonderful fellow, Dr. Karanja. The then uh, maybe you take the, the rest five, you just in, introduce the chairs of all those standing committees. Yeah, um, so legal and ethics is quite active. You know, we are always in court. We are always uh, rubbing shoulders with parliamentarians. Uh, as you remember, they told us uh, we need to stop making noise from outside. We need to join parliament. And I like what the vice president talked about. Um, uh, we need to be in parliament, yeah? Uh, we need to have strategies around that. So legal and ethics led by honorable fellow, Dr. Dominic Karanja, uh, Gugi, um, PR and... Um, the chats on my screen. Uh, education committee led by Dr. Mike Mugoma. Uh, investment and budget committee, the Dr. Dr. James Mwenda, uh, PSOC chair. Uh, Honorable, the committee of the Honorable Fellows led by Honorable Fellow uh, Professor I.O. Kibwage. Um, yeah, anyone have missed PR and advocacy? Uh, I think that's, that's uh, led by um, it's, I don't know why it, it has, uh, but it's, it's actually uh, supported directly by the secretariat, yeah. yeah. Great. You, um, uh, the fellows, if you are here and you are able to type your name, I know all of you are older than me, so maybe you have that challenge. Uh, you can put your names on that chat. Next slide, please. So as the next slide comes, we... Honorable fellow I've seen today is uh, Prof. J. Orwa. Uh, we had Honorable fellow Prof. Sandemo, Honorable fellow uh, Dr. Be, uh, who are there. Um, I don't know if I've seen any other today. Yeah. And it's... All right, the branches we have, uh, and maybe again, you'll, uh, the, the branch chairs can introduce themselves if they're here on the chat. Um, otherwise, uh, pres uh, President, you can say uh, if they have a chair. Nairobi, you, you can take this. Yeah, so Nairobi has uh, Dr. Chege uh, uh, Waweru. Um, that's course, Dr. Mutaza. Um, Nyanza, we have uh, Dr. Uh, I don't know why it's not coming on my screen. Uh, so we have Nyanza, we have uh, Western, we have Dr. Can I share my screen? I don't know. Uh, is able? 
Or just leave it like that. It's okay. Uh, let me just. And needs. Okay, we'll just carry on. Next slide. Yeah. <clears throat> So Dr. Matimbai, Western uh, Branch Chair, we have uh, Tanathi, um, that's Dr. Bernard, uh, Meru, Dr. Um, uh, Dr. Kome, um, we have uh, Mount Kenya East, Trukana, uh, North Rift, Central Rift, South Rift, North Eastern, Central, Lower Eastern. Let me just list their members here. The, the, Officials we have, Doctor, we have uh, Doctor Gertrude Nasike from Trukana. We have Doctor Kome, like I said, from uh, uh, Eastern, Upper Eastern. Um, Doctor Chwea uh, from North Rift. We have Doctor Lawrence Otieno from uh, Nyanza. Doctor Victor Achoka. We have him from um, from uh, South R Central Rift. That's that's Akuru and Naivasha. Uh, Dr. Edward Chege Nairobi, we have uh, Dr. Edward Maina um, Bugwa from um, uh, Central, that's Kiambu, uh, Tanati. Uh, we have um, other branch officials, Dr. Dagane in Northeastern, Murtaza, I've talked about him in uh, Coasts, branch chair. Dr. Riziki uh, from Mombasa, Dr. Bob Chair from um, uh, Nyanza, that's Nyanza. Dr. De Musik from, uh, so these are the officials uh, from uh, Central, that's the newest, I think the newest branch, that's um, the one shared by Dr. Yaile, covering Kericho, uh, Kajiado, and um, Bomet. Uh, Dr. Ima Kivuva, Dr. Geoffrey uh, Moya. Okay, I think we're good, uh, President. Kia uh, Ondiko, is Janet. Okay, all right, all right. Next, next right. slide, please. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. I have a list of 40 leaders. You want me to continue? Or that's no, we're good. We're good. Let's just go to the next slide. Uh, thanks. Right. So, uh, as you heard, PSK is an umbrella body. It, uh, it, it uh, has the following affiliates. And this was a game I wanted to play uh, but now I think we're running out of time so we won't play this game but uh, HOPAC stands for Hospital Pharmacists Association for Kenya. Uh, if you have another uh, translation of that acronym uh, share with us on the chat group and we'll make it as hilarious as possible. Uh, RAPS uh, Regulatory Affairs Pharmacy. Uh, maybe President you can also announce the chairs as I go through the names. So HOPAC. Yeah. Uh, so we have Hopak. Um, we have the long-serving chair, Doctor. Um, Doctor. Uh, why, why the, the name disappeared? Uh, Doctor no, Menge. No, not Menge. The one came after Menge. Uh, okay. Doctor Kissing. Doctor Mary Kisingu, who stepped down, uh, and now we have uh, Doctor. Uh, he made a presentation the other day. Just um, Hopak. I'm trying to remember. Uh, Kagwa, Dr. Kagwa uh, is the chair for HOPAC. RAPS is the Dr. Um, Regulatory Affairs Pharmacies Association. I think all, all members here can just shout out their member, their chair, the names of their chairs. I don't know who's the chair because it's a quasi group. Uh, I, I'm not a member. They refuse for me to be a member. Um, um, the, we have Clinical Pharmacies Association, FKPM, Dr. Rohin, uh, Toxicology Association uh, of Kenya. Um, who's the chair there? It's not Dr. Yaile, but Dr. Yaile is a member. I'm uh, writing the name. Dr. KPDA. Uh, we have Kenya Pharmaceutical Distributor Association led by Dr. Dr. Murisho. Um, uh, Back to you. Great. And then I was going to add BBC. So uh, you can, uh, those of you who saw the slide oh, yeah, in the beginning, BBC. this is your test. <laughs> you, you can put your yeah, acronym so what does in BBC there. Stand for? Yeah, and who the chair is. Let's hear it from the members. Great. Thank you. Next slide. So 
So our next uh, presentation is um, by Dr. Christine Wangia, and she is going to talk about uh, anti-inflammatory activity of whole plant extracts of selected Kenyan Ruelia species. So over to you, Dr. Christine, uh, please 20 minutes, uh, a prize if you finish before noon. Thank you. Please let me, let me have the slides. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Christine Wangia. I'm a senior lecturer at the Department of Pharmacology School of Pharmacy, JQUAT. I'm thankful to PSK to have given me an opportunity to share my research findings. The title of my research my study is Anti-Inflammatory Activity of Whole Plant Extracts of Selected Kenyan Ruelia Species. Next slide, please. The problem statement is rheumatoid arthritis, but I'll give some short background how I began studying this uh, species. In 83-89, I got uh, our, a scholarship from the government to pursue master's degree at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences to do a drug assay, master's in drug assay. So I got a plant species there from my supervisor from Ruelia species, where I was to study the anthritic activity. So I did some preliminary findings and found this species. Uh, I got uh, preliminary phytochemistry. I did uh, uh, acute toxicity studies, infl anti-inflammatory and, and arthritic activity. And that species was very, very promising. So when I came back, as usual, when you are a government official, you are redeployed. So I was posted to Rift Valley Provincial Hospital in Nakuru. During that time, there were no medicines at the pharmacy. I was the pharmacist, but uh, we didn't even have basic drugs like chloroquine, aspirin, paracetamol. So I went back to the drawing board because as a pharmacist, I needed to serve the patients. So I decided to go into private practice. I went to community pharmacy in a, rural, uh, in a rural place where actually we were the first people to send a pharmacy there. But my desire was to serve the community. Then 2009, I got an opportunity to serve at the university and the university teaching goes together with the research. So I revisited my plan. I said, if I'm going to do any research, I just wanted to continue the studies that I had in India. So when I went to the National research, uh, Museum, I found this species was in Kenya and I started my research December 2010. So as I continued with this species in Kenya, I was very excited, but I decided to, to pursue, to have these studies to be under PhD studies. So I got admission at JQuart 2013 and I had to work on two other species from the Ruelia species. But the main aim was to find out this Ruelia species had anti-inflammatory activity. What interested me was the condition, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Because when I studied what rheumatoid arthritis is, it's a very painful condition. It's an autoimmune disease, which leads to pain, inflammation, stiffness, especially the small fingers. It's a progressive disease. So with the time, these patients cannot even hold objects. So the loss of function leads to loss of economic activities, and these patients actually become a burden to their caregivers because they cannot do normal chores. This condition has also comorbid conditions. The prevalence is 0.51% uh, and women are affected more than men with the age bracket of more than 50. Next slide, please. There's no cure for rheumatoid arthritis. Normally, analgesics like acetaminophen, non-steroidal and inflammatory drugs, when this don't help, and these patients undergo lab tests to confirm that it's rheumatoid arthritis, like C-reactive protein, erythrocyte, uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, rheumatoid factor. If these are confirmed, then these patients are put on disease-modifying uh, and rheumatic drugs. These drugs are slow and onset. Therefore, in between the NSAIDs, we give the corticosteroids. And if the disease-modifying and rheumatic drugs don't work, then we go further to biologics. 
We also have non-pharmacological interventions where we give supplements, especially omega-3 supplements from fish. The drugs that the pharmacological intervention has a lot of side effects, ranging from GIT bone marrow suppression, and they are expensive, especially the biologics. I talked to a rheumatologist at KNH who told me that uh, an, a biologic can go for 200,000 per month. So when patients start, they may do one or two months and they give up. So when the pharmacological and non-pharmacological interventions don't work, then the last option is surgery. Surgery to repair, replace, or, refu or fuse the joints. Surgery is expensive, there is bleeding, we need strong and co coagulants, and after surgery, there is a lot of um, uh, physiotherapy, otherwise these patients will have problems. Next slide, please. So the goals of treatment, my justification is, can I have a medicine that will reduce pain and inflammation? Because pain is the one that makes a patient seek medical advice. And when these patients have reduced pain and inflammation, their well-being will improve. So I'm looking for alternatives that are going to have minimum side effects on the patients, are effective and have minimum side effects. They are also cost effective. So natural products are found to have to be an enormous reservoir of biologically active molecules. Next slide, please. Land-based drugs are popular. As we all understand, everything is herbal. Colgate herbal, lotions herbal, everything is herbal. Why? Because herbal products are not have minimum side effects. They are affordable, they're socially acceptable, and easily accessible. So the plants of my study are the Ruelia species. Ruelia species have been reported to have many medicinal uses, ranging from analgesic and inflammatory and hypertensive and hypertensive, gastroprotective and microbial and fungal and cancer. You will check Ruelia species and you'll find very many biological activities. So the Ruelia species that I'm studying, the Kenyan Ruelia species are three. I Ruelia prostrata, Ruelia bignoniflora, and Ruelia linear bracteolata. Why did I do, why did I decide to do this study? Because previous studies of this Ruelia species, I did the acute toxicity study and I did some chronic toxicity study. The plants were safe. I also did previous analgesic studies using animal models for acute um, analgesic tests and progressive. So the plants was safe. In acute toxicity studies, up to 2,000 milligrams per kilogram, the species was safe. Some chronic toxicity study after giving for 28 days, there was, I did the hematology, biochem blood hematology, hemo uh, biochemistry. I did the gross necropsy. I did the histology of internal organs, liver, heart, kidney, spleen, intestine, and they did not have adverse effects on these internal organs. The analgesic activity was uh, acute toxicity was a tail flick method and progressive toxicity uh, um, analgesic activity was the formalin test. The three uh, extracts were even more potent than acetaminophen and there was a 200 milligrams per kilogram orally and they were as good as morphine 10 milligrams per kilogram when it was given by subcutaneous injection. Let me go to the next slide please. So my broad objective, objective is to determine, was to determine the anti-inflammatory activity of aqueous and methanolic extracts of Ruella prostrata, Ruella bignoniflora, and Ruella linear bracteolata, all plant parts. Next slide, please. There's another one before that. Materials and methods, all the solvents were, uh, and uh, reference drugs were sourced from Sigma Aldrich and uh, the reference drugs were diclofenac, sodium, and ibuprofen. Laboratory animals were sourced from a safari animal house, JQuat. They were whistled bino rats with either sex, six to eight weeks old. Next slide, please. The study sites. <laughs> From Isiolo, Isiolo County was the linear bracteolata. Kibwezi Makwen County was Ruelia bignoniflora. Mudedene and Kavo was Ruelia prostrata. Those were the sites where the plants were collected. Next slide, please. 
Upon plant collection, I used a plant taxonomist to identify the plants and uh, water specimens were deposited at the University of Nairobi Herbarium. Next slide, please. Sample preparation, after the plants were collected, they were dried under shade for a period of about two months, two to three months. Then they were extracted. I did organic extraction and aqueous extraction. Organic extraction was using absolute methanol after defatting with the petroleum ether, and that was by cold maceration, whereas aqueous extraction was by hot maceration. Organic extracts were obtained by rotor evaporator, whereas aqueous extracts were obtained by freeze drying. Next slide, please. Sample determination was used, uh, was determined, that is the equation, and I used uh, K was the number of groups, that is uh, the positive control, negative control, and extracts. So with the degree of freedom of between 10 and 20, the largest number was five, but to increase the power of analysis, I used a number of six. Next slide, please. Ethical considerations, approval was granted from CERU uh, after very many city online courses. So the experiments were performed in accordance with the collaborative institution training initiative guidelines, which were really, <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were actually drastic because there were really many, so that I was to find out how to handle the animals, give how much dose and all that, they are the guidelines from city. Euthanasia was by the euthanasia guidelines and carbon dioxide was used for euthanasia. Next slide, please. The carrageenan test is a test that is used for determining uh, uh, screening for anti-inflammatory activity. It is well documented from 1962. It has been used to even to screen most of the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. So the rats were randomly assigned into seven groups of six, positive controllers, diclofenac, sodium 20 milligrams per kilogram, and ibuprofen 200 milligrams per kilogram by mouth. These are the documented doses for these uh, reference drugs. And treated control was given phosphate buffered saline pH 7.4. Plant extracts were in four doses, 250 milligrams, 500, 1,000, and 1,500 milligrams per kilogram body weight orally. Next slide, please. A permanent marker was made at the tibiotarsal joint. The reference drugs were given half an hour before carrageenan injection, and uh, the extracts were given one hour before carrageenan injection. So 1.1% weight in volume carrageenan in normal saline was uh, prepared, and 0.1 ml was uh, injected in the subplanter, the right hi right, uh, left hind paw using gauge 26. After injecting the carrageenan, it is an irritant, it causes edema. The rat was held vertically, dipping into the digital place, uh, water plethysmometer up to the mark, and swelling was determined by volume displacement, and measurements were done every hour for six hours. Next slide, please. Evaluation of inflammatory activity was but that equation. Next slide, please. Data analysis, the data was entered in Microsoft Excel 2016 spreadsheet and Minitab statistical software was used this for analysis. Descriptive, st uh, descriptive statistics were generated and expressed as mean plus or minus standard error of mean. And ANOVA was used to analyze the significant differences between the effects of the extracts among different treatment groups. And a value of P equals to or uh, less than 0 0.05 was considered to have a significant difference. The data were displayed in tables and graphs. Next slide, please. Results. Results. Percentage inhibition of swelling of the three species, Ruella prostrata, Rioli bignoniflora, and Linear bracteolata, both aqueous and organic methanolic extracts were was dose dependent. Highest activity was six hour, and highest activity was a dose of fifteen hundred milligrams. It was found that in all these extracts, both aqueous and methanolic extracts, a dose of a thousand milligrams and fifteen hundred milligrams, there was no statistical significance between the two doses. Next slide, please. This comparative inhibition of swelling of Ruella extracts. So all of them, we can see, 
this is a first hour, second hour, third hour. You can see all of them showed the similar trend where the sixth hour gave the highest and inflammatory activity. Even the extra, the re reference standard, this is ibuprofen, and this is uh, diclofenac sodium. They showed a similar trend with the highest activity at six hour point. It is reported that carotenoid induced edema. The first one hour is because of the uh, mediators like vessel active amines like histamine, 5 hydroxytryptamine, bradykinin. But the latter one, especially from three hours, is the Cox system where we have prostaglandin cytokines being released. So actually, we find that this species, plus the non steroidal and inflammatory activity uh, drugs, who are most effective in the, uh, the system where we have the Cox pathway, LOX pathway, where we have mediators, as I've said, prostaglandins, leukotriene, cytokines, tumor necrosis factor. Next slide, please. So my discussion is, Equus extras of Ruad Prostrata showed the highest inhibition of swelling of 79%, whereas Bignoniflora showed 70%, Linear Bracteolata showed 68%. It is important to note that all the three extracts showed higher inhibition of swelling than diclofenac sodium, and these are just extracts. They are not even pure compounds, these are just extracts. They are showing they were more active than diclofenac sodium, which is a reference standard, which showed 67%. They were more potent than ibuprofen 200 milligrams, which was showed 60%. Diclofenac 20 milligrams, ibuprofen 200 milligrams. These are the doses that are uh, reported to be the effective doses in anti-inflammatory activities. Equus extracts showed a superior anti-inflammatory activity compared to the Ruelia, compared to the standards. Next slide, please. This is comparative inhibition of swelling at 1500 milligrams. I decided to take the highest swelling of all of them. So at 1500 milligrams, that is the, fa the first hour, the trend is first hour, second hour, and it is very clear that in the sixth hour, that is when we had highest anti-inflammatory activity with aqueous extract of Ruelia prostrata showing highest activity, followed by the methanol extract of Ruelia prostrata. Then the third one is the Ruelia pignoniflora. Next slide, please. Discussion. Methanolic extracts showed lower activity than aqueous extracts. Methanol extract of Ruelia prostrata was 71% compared to the 79. Methanol extract of Bignoniflora was 53 compared to 70. Methanol extract of linear, linear Bracteolata was 62 compared to 68. And as I've said at the beginning, this is the first report of anti inflammatory activity of, of Ruelia Bignoniflora and Ruelia Linear Bracteolata. To the best of my knowledge, even if you go online, you will not find any publications on Ruelia Bignoniflora or Ruelia Linear Bracteolata apart from the ones that are published. Next slide, please. In conclusion, I can say that the three Ruelia species possess significant anti-inflammatory activity compared to the untreated control. With the extract of Ruelia prostrata showing highest activity and the aqueous extract showing more potent activity than the methanolic extract. And it is very important to note that the reference drugs, diclofenac, sodium, and ibuprofen showed lower anti-inflammatory activity despite the fact that they were pure substances. Next slide, please. My recommendation are this. The aqueous extracts of Ruelia species should be subjected to underthritic studies, both in vitro and in vivo. Mechanism of action. Because this uh, anti-inflammatory activity is due to inhibition of inflammatory mediators, we need to do ex vivo studies on inflammatory mediators, like cytokines, ILB, IL-1B, IL-6, IL-4, IL-10, tumor necrosis factor, prostaglandins, leukotrienes, interferon gamma. We need to find out that the mechanism of action of this Ruelia species, what are the inflammatory mediators are they inhibiting? Because we find some arthritic drugs like adalimumab inhibits the tumor necrosis factor, a receptor. We find tocilizumab inhibits IL-6. So which are the inf inflammatory mediators that this Ruelia species are inhibiting to get the, to have the endothritic activity? Then we need 
to do bioactive phytochemical compounds to identify what are the compounds to be isolated and characterized to end up having the structure, the elucidation of the structure. And this would need a lot of spectroscopic analysis. For example, GCMS, like I did already, GCMS, LCMS, proton 1 NMR, carbon 13 NMR, two dimension cause NMR, X ray crystallography, mass spec, even um, optical rotation, because we find that the drugs that we have, it matters whether they are liver rotatory or dextrorotatory, because most of the drugs are racemic mixtures. But we may find that the liver may be the one active or the dextro may be the one active. So even optical rotation is one of the uh, parameters that can be tested when we get these compounds. Then the moment we get these compounds, we call them lead compounds. We can do in silico studies. In silico studies, the same as uh, uh, network pharmacology, where we have computer prediction of these compounds sitting on which targets. Once we know, we get the uh, targets for analgesia, targets for an inflammation, targets for arthritis. Then we find what are these lead compounds from this uh, religious species, which, which are the targets that these lead compounds sit on. Then once we know, we do uh, optim optimization. That is the revitalization of the lead compounds to optimize, to find which are the characteristics that we need, structure activity relationships, to find the best ADME, pharmacokinetic properties. And the moment we get the lead compounds, we optimize them to get the best derivative, we do the structure activity relationships, then we can, I can go ahead and apply for in, in investigation a new drug to find out this, what are these compounds that can be used for uh, treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. So my dream up to today is to push this research to investigation of the new drug to see if this can go to clinical trials for the management of inflammation, pain, and arthritis. Next slide, please. And I can say thank you very much for listening. That is why I was collecting my species. I went, that is uh, one of the species I particularly went and collected. That is the natural habitat of Ruelia prostata in 2010, December. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Dr. Miti Adawa. Our next, uh, that was a very good presentation, by the way. Uh, it's excellent uh, application of, uh, you know, knowledge, uh, herbal knowledge to pharmaceutical and pharmacological principles. A very good presentation. Um, our next presentation is uh, from one of our sponsors uh, doc by Susan Okoma, Regional Marketing Manager for Cosmos. Uh, please keep your time, 10 minutes. Over to you, okay. Susan. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Sound check, can you hear me well? Thank you, Dr. Niz. Can you hear me well? Yes. Am I loud and clear? Hello? Yes, you are, madam. Please carry on. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Anis. Uh, with all protocols observed, first, um, greetings from Cosmos. And I would like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to interact with you uh, through this presentation. My name is Susan Okoma. I'm the Regional Marketing Manager for Cosmos. And for the next uh, five to 10 minutes, I'll just take you through uh, a presentation about the company and our commitment. So first, uh, congratulations to the symposium committee for such a rich program and a very thought provoking uh, presentations. Kudos to you and a very great attendance. It's been such an interactive virtual meeting. Kudos, we hope to see more of this. So next slide, please. That's uh, Cosmos, the company. You can see some pictures, uh, uh, snippets of the company. Kindly, uh, next, next slide. So for Cosmos, the importance of medicine can only be realized if they are readily available when they are required. And this is the sole purpose that Cosmos was started in 1978. 
So it was started by one of your own, Dr. Prakash Patel, who's the pharmacist PPB number 001. I, I saw you guys posting your numbers. He's one of the oldest members of um, your professional. And uh, the aim was to manufacture quality and affordable medicines for Kenyans. So to reach the lower cadre um, of Kenyans. And um, for us, cost, uh, quality is paramount of paramount importance. And for quality, most of you in your presentations, you mentioned quality, so it cannot be of, overemphasized. And we achieve this through good manufacturing practices and uh, of course through both private and public partnerships. And with this, we are able to produce about, uh, we're producing about 300 uh, registered uh, products which you've interacted with. And we aim to increase the quality of life and of course providing this at, uh, at, at a conveniently and uh, for with patient uh, 